Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video we're having another look at my orchid collection. Let's get started. <laughs> It's mid-January and 9 out of 11 of my orchid plants are now flowering and I'm so excited about them. I really wanted to show you. I've got some real beauties. They are all Phalaenopsis orchids or moth orchids and I've just picked them up from garden centres or um, DIY stores that sell plants. There's nothing super special. No no specially bred ones but I picked them all because I absolutely love them so let's have a look at them these first ones came to me in an arrangement I definitely showed these to you last time the back is lime green and the overlaying color is this beautiful magenta burgundy color and that means that the speckling is in the lime green. Absolutely gorgeous. So this one has just two flowers upon it. I did actually snap the main flower stalk off so it's actually done really well to put two flowers out. I'm quite, quite relieved about that. And then its twin has put up a much shorter flower spike but with a few more flowers on it. This year I've remembered to actually label my plants because I always forget and I think oh I'll remember what colour that one was and I don't. And I see a new orchid and I think oh I love that one but it turns out it's pretty much the same colour as one I've already got. This one I'm going to have to wait and see what it is. It is not flowering this year. It um, hasn't been very happy. It's got some fairly manky leaves on it. It tends to sit a bit further away from the daylight than the others do on the windowsill. This one tucks right into the corner and um, it needs a bit of attention. Hands up, it needs attention. This one I also definitely showed to you last year. It's the one that I describe as being like sugared almonds. I love this one so much. It's so dainty and the colour is so soft. The colour is pink, almost, almost violet, just laid over the top of the white. Oh, it's gorgeous. You're so cute. There's another tiny one here. I can't remember how I came by this one. Um, <laughs> I don't think it was given to me. I'm pretty sure I bought it. But it's white all over and then just right inside the throats of the flowers is some violet speckling. and then the white throat. It's the delicacy of these little ones, it's just so pretty. What I've started to do this year is not clamp the stem quite so upright. Um, it takes up a little bit less space on the, the window ledge I suppose if I do them upright, but you get a slightly more graceful curve to the stem if you let them just bend over a bit more. I mean some people don't stake them at all and they just get these beautiful cascades to the flowers uh, where they sit bang on top of each other. Boom, boom, boom. But that's something you need to do or decide what you're going to do almost as soon as the flower stalk appears. Make that decision. Also make the decision which way around your plant's going to sit because once the flower buds start to form you don't really want to be moving your plant at all. In my mind I thought well I want to be able to look at my flowers so they're all pointing towards the sunshine to the window great so all I get to see is the backs of them 
I'm going to turn them round. And then what I'd find is the flowers would try and twist themselves towards the daylight and I'd lose the impact of the whole display because they were trying to work out where on earth the sun was. So this year I've been good and I haven't moved them until today when I've brought them in for filming but it'll be fairly obvious which way around they're meant to be sitting on my windowsill. Here's another little one that's not flowering this year. It came from Waitrose originally, I'm pretty sure I showed it last time and it was in a much much smaller pot, even even smaller than this and, and it was almost in an outer pot that was a bit like a succulent pot um, you know, one of the china pots with the small diameter hole. So it really was in a teeny tiny pot. So I did pop it up a little bit just to give it a bit more space. It looks to me like the soil needs replenishing. So I might consider doing that today. <laughs> this is what orchids do. <laughs> they go bananas. <laughs> it's not I'm not sure what colour this one is, I'm thinking it's probably a pink speckledy one. I think it's probably also one of my oldest ones. It's got quite a long stem on it, quite a few leaves. I can't remember, and it's one I haven't labelled yet. I'm just, you can see the buds are just about to break, so it won't be long before I can pop a tag in identifying what colour it is and you can see again I haven't actually clamped that too high so it has got a little bit of a natural arch to the stem I've been waiting and waiting for this one to come out I could not remember what colour it was and it's just broken bud in the last day or two so you can see the three back petals are striped with lime up the centres and then the speckling is beautiful magenta burgundy again. I'm, I'm clearly quite attracted to the, that colouring. Uh, they're all variations on that theme, bar one, although it's got a touch of it on, and I'll show you that to you in a second. So that one's going to be smashing when it's out properly. Here's my gorgeous, enormous white Phalaenopsis. Ugh. <laughs> Look at that. They are immaculate and they're huge flowers. This is the biggest flowering one I've got. Oh. And this one I have definitely shared on Instagram because, oh my goodness, this one is worth waiting for. Look at that gorgeous zesty lemon colour <sighs> and it's got that <laughs> amazing magenta as well <sighs> and I'm really pleased with the, the, the arch that this one has formed uh, you can see how I've almost achieved a rather nice cascade there of the flowers. Nearly. <laughs> Sometimes when you buy orchids in flower and they've got a really amazing cascade, it's actually because they've got it on a bent stake. So um, they will actually make stakes that are pretty much that shape and then clamp the stalk onto that as it's growing and that will help set the flowers in that sort of a shape. My last orchid to share with you is this lovely, it almost looks like a completely solid purple magenta, but it has got little tiny spotting on it. I think you can just about see the white speckling in the back of the throat there, and also how you've almost got this sort of self pattern happening on the lower petals as they run out to the edge. It's almost a sort of magenta on pink. Very subtle. However, this orchid has a problem. It 
it's got fungus growing around its roots and that is not good that won't be a beneficial mycorrhiza that's yeah that's nasty I need to get rid of that I need to repot this baby even though it's in flower and that really isn't the best thing to do but I mean it has only actually got one flower on it so I think for the health of the plant let's get it repotted now before I do that I'm going to take all my other ones inside because I don't want to spread the spores to my beautiful ones that are healthy I'm going to be replacing the compost with some of my favourite eCoco product so this is their organic cocoa husk growing media for healthy orchids um, I'm, again I'm not sponsored by eCoco I just really love their products peat free uh, environmentally sustainable I'm using them for my carnivorous plants I'm using them for my succulents and now also for my orchids I don't want to reuse this soil at all or risk it getting anywhere so I'm going to empty it all straight into this bag and throw it away but it's definitely not going on my compost heap moo wee now let's come in and have a look at the extent of the problem you can see that weird powderiness that is all fungus and it's right the way around that possibly means that there's not enough air getting into through the pot here although this is sold as an orchid pot it has actually got very minimal airflow I might swap it for a different one first thing first let's get rid of this horrible compost so I've got my orchid and its pot in the bag I'm going to try and carefully get my fingers underneath the leaf crown and support the plant and carefully pull ah. These roots are not happy. I'm actually going to go and rinse this off in a bucket, I think. See if I can get rid of some of this. And then I'll have to cut the rest of it away. Oh, it's really struggling. There's one or two roots that are still okay. And as this has been in the soil, I'm also going to throw the stick away. Okay, I'm going to go in and prune off what I don't like the look of. Try and follow the roots back. And this is a case of removing anything that definitely looks rotten. try and hang on to anything that is pushing out new growth and that is the areas that look brighter like here you've got the old growth which is dark green and then it goes to a lighter fleshier growth that is new growth so we'll hang on to that feel for anything squishy we don't want squishy roots I don't know why this has happened, you know, it could be just that the, the compost was breaking down really badly and it needed changing and I didn't notice. I am by no means an expert with orchids. There is so much to learn about them. It's me look really harsh. 
There is absolutely no point in keeping dead or dying roots on these plants. It, it, they're not providing nutrients. Far better to prune them back and try and encourage some new fresh growth. I'm almost inclined to actually take this flower stem off as well because that is just sapping this plant of energy. I think I need to. I think this is such a drastic bit of work. I'm going to take that one as well. I see the way that one's all totally dry on the end. I'm going to cut that one back as well. I think for the health of the plant it would be worth taking that flower spike off completely. Right, I think I'm going to go and give this another rinse. See if I can get some more of those spores off. You can see quite a lot of white speckling on this. Right, I've had a bit of a tidy up and now I've got myself some alcohol wipes. These are isopropyl alcohol or IPA or isopropanol and you can get them online very easily. They are used in the medical industry for clearing up sites that are about to be injected, that sort of thing. What I'm going to do is give everything a wipe down. You can get this in a bottle as well, you don't have to use cereal or swabs. And I actually use these on my succulents if I get any form of scale insect. It's really good at cleaning that off, so I'm now going to give the roots a bit of a wipe off. I believe you can probably also use something like um, a hydrogen peroxide to do this. That's now cleaned up, the flower spike's been cut off, I have wiped over with the alcohol wipes to get rid of any lurking spores, I've re removed as much of the potting as I can, sometimes the roots will actually poke through the um, soil mixture <laughs> and you, you, you risk breaking the roots to try and get it off but I've checked that it's as clean as it can be and now I'm going to pot it up I'm going to go back down a pot size I think because I've removed an awful lot of growth I think that will be fine just like that but what I also want to do is I'm going to add some extra holes somehow. I have not done a particularly pretty job of this. This pot is kind of fractious. Um, so <laughs> this is not the prettiest craft job I've ever done. I'm kind of embarrassed to show you that. But what it will do is improve the airflow. It might still hold compost in it. Who can tell? Okay. So, to repot Orchid. And you want to support the plant. It is going to lean over. It's what they do in nature. They pop themselves into the crooks of trees and they do lean over. And that's why the flower spike then cascades over as well. We can help it a little bit by supporting it while we pot it. So I'm going to do it probably about there. I want the top of the, uh, the crown to sit just above where the soil level is going to finish. Now when I say soil, this is the product I'm using, the Ecoco Koya Husk that I'm going to be using. So it's going to make a really light, open, substrate for this to live in and hopefully that means it will stop it getting fungal disease because it won't be compacting and trapping air and moisture inside around the roots. 
So continue to support the plant up in the pot and push the new substrate in and around the roots. You're not trying to compact the substrate down all the way and close up all the gaps. Otherwise, what was the point in adding all the air holes into the pot? It needs that airflow. It is useful though just to pat the pot a little bit. You can see there's quite a big air gap there. And it might be worth me just trying to feed a little bit in. I will dunk this in a pot of warm water, tepid to warm, not hot, and just let that substrate soak up some moisture. So that's this orchid looking a little bit more cleaned up and repotted in its new substrate. The other orchids are all looking absolutely stunning. I'm glad I managed to show those to you. Right, well, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, share, and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.